Okay, this chapter we're going to talk about game theory, and we're going to start out talking about what's called strictly determined games. So let's start with an example. Let's say that we have two stores, store R and store C. And let's say that each store can price a TV set at $4.99 or $5.49. But if store R prices it at $4.99 and store C prices it at $4.99, then R will get 55% of the market share, which means store C will lose 55% or only gain 45% of the market share. But if you do $4.99 for R and $5.49 for C, then store R will get 70% of the market share, and store C would then get 30%. And if you go $5.49 and $4.99, then R gets 40% of the market share, with C losing 40% of the market share. And then if you do $5.49 for each store, then you get uh, R get 66% of the market share, and store C would lose 66% of the market share. Well, what happens here is the matrix just represents the percentage of business store R will receive, and any business that store R receives means store C will lose it. This is actually uh, a competition between two stores or two players. And so what we want to look at is look at this as a strictly determined matrix game and so let's talk about what is a strictly determined matrix game and then we can figure out how each store should maybe play the game if you have an n m by n matrix um, it's considered a two-person zero-sum matrix game in which r player chooses any of the rows and the c players chooses any one of the columns so if we take this 3 by 4 matrix, then the rows would be what R would play, and the columns would be what C would play. So for example, let's say R chose row 2, and C chose column 4. Well, then what that would tell me is that R is going to earn 3, or R is going to gain 3, but that also tells me that C is going to lose 3. Okay, so now if we took a different tact, let's say R, R chose row 3 and C chose column 1. Well, now this tells me that R is going to lose 8, which means that C is going to gain 8. So what we want to do here is try to find the maximum strategy or the optimal strategy for both players. So the fundamental theorem of game theory is basically you have a matrix game that's played repeatedly and player R attempts to maximize winnings while player C attempts to minimize losses. Well what you can do since the rows represent player R is look at each row and find the minimum uh, or the uh, worst case scenario for R. So, uh, so for R here the worst thing that could happen in row one would be to lose four dollars. The worst thing that could happen in row two for R would be to gain one dollar. And the worst thing to happen in row three would be to lose eight dollars. Okay. Now, for player C, we look at the columns. And in the columns, we want to look at the worst thing that could happen for player C. Now, remember, in the columns for C, when you see a, a zero, that means nobody gains. But if you see a five, remember that means R gains five, which means C loses five. Now, since here R gains, uh, loses eight, so that means C gains eight. So that's good for C. What we want is to find what's bad for C, what's worse for C. Well, what's worse for C would be if R gains five. So that would be the worst. And so we can put a square around that. In this column, R would gain 6, so C would lose 6. And then in this column, the, the worst case for R would be that, or worst case for C, I mean, would be that R gains uh, 1 and C loses 1. And then the worst case for C would be if R gained 20, because that would mean C would lose 20. All right, now, remember, each of these entries tells you what R gains, 
So a positive value means that R is going to have a increase, but a negative value means R loses money, therefore C gains money. Okay, so if you look at these now, and you look at all of the brackets, pretend like those are squares and all the parentheses are circles, well, you'll notice there's an overlap right here at 1. And this overlap is actually what we call a saddle value. So this is a saddle value. So this is the point that optimizes both of the two players simultaneously. And um, because in one direction, one is a minimum, and in another direction, one is a maximum. So basically, for the row, the one is a minimum, and for the column, the one is a maximum. So that's actually a saddle value. And the way you locate saddle points is you can circle the minimum value in each row and square the maximum value in each column, and then find the entry that's both squared and circled. So in this row, the minimum value is negative 8, so you can circle that. The next row, the minimum value is 4, so we circle that. And then the next row, the minimum value is negative 5, so we circle that. Now in the column, we choose the maximum value. So this column will square the 4, that's the maximum. In this column, we'll square the 8. And in this column, we'll square the 10. Okay, so if you look at look for the entry that is both has both the circle and the square around it, and that's 4, so the saddle value is 4. Now, if this was 0, um, then we would say uh, it's a zero-sum, I mean, it's a fair game if it was zero. But obviously, it's not a fair game because the saddle value is not zero. Okay, now, if a payoff matrix has saddle values x and y, then the two values will, will have to be equal to one another. Okay, so in strictly determined games, a matrix is said to be a strictly determined if it has a saddle value. In a strictly determined game, optimal strategies are that R should always choose any row containing a saddle value, and C should, cha should choose any column containing a saddle value. Saddle value is called the value of the strictly determined game. So that game we just did, the value of it was 4. And the game is fair if its value is 0. So now let's look at an example, another example. We have two shopping centers here that have competing discount stores. Store R in one center, store C in the other. Every week, each store chooses one and only one way to promote their wares. So I've labeled uh, the rows here as uh, for TV, newspaper, mail, and internet for store R. And then up here, same thing for all the for store C and the columns. So basically, um, if they both use TV, you know, there's a zero. But if store R uses TV and store C uses newspaper, then store R is going to lose $2, which means store C is going to gain $2. On the other hand, if store R uses newspaper and store C uses newspaper, then store R is going to gain $2 and C, store C is going to lose $2. So, what I want to do is find the saddle values of this example and then find the optimal um, strategies. Okay, so look for the minimum, notice the, find the minimum values in each row. So here, just pretend like the parentheses are circles and the brackets are squares. So negative 2 and negative 2, those are both minimum values in that row. In this row, the minimum values are the two ones. In this row, the minimum value is negative 1, and in this row, the minimum values are 1. Now look at the column. In the first column, we want the max, in the columns, we want the maximum values. So the maximum value here is 1, the maximum values here are 2, and the maximum value here are 1s, and the maximum value here is 3. Now, you'll notice there's four places where there's an overlap, but notice every one of those is a 1. So 1 is a saddle point. And it, or saddle value, and it appears four times. So the optimal strategy for R would be, be to choose uh, row 2 or row 4, since those are where the saddle values are, 
and the optimal strategy for C would be to choose column 1 or column 3 because that's where the saddle values are for C. So basically that's what they would be choosing. Now the value of the game is 1. Store R has the advantage. When both stores use optimal strategy, Store R gains 1% of the market share at Store C's expense. Okay, let's look at, let's go back to the above example. We have uh, the two stores that have the TV sets. Now, if I find the uh, the minimum value of each row, 55% for the first row and 40% for the second row, then find the maximum value of each column. The maximum here is 55%. The maximum of this column is 70%. And then find where the two intersect. I get a saddle value of 55%. So the optimal strategy for R would be to choose row 1. And the optimal strategy for C would be to play column 1. And so the value of the game is 55%. R has the advantage since it gains more than 50% of the market. Now, in a non-strictly determined game, let's do a penny matching game. Okay, so two players, R and C, each player simultaneously shows the side of their pennies, head or tails. If the pennies match, R wins a cent and C loses a cent. If the pennies do not match, R loses a cent and C wins one cent. So the game matrix is here. So head, head, R loses a cent. And tail tail R lose R I'm sorry R wins a cent and tail tail R wins a cent. If you get any of the other two, then R loses a cent, so it seems C wins a cent. Now you can find the saddle values here. Um, the the problem, but the problem is if you look for the saddle values in each column, the lowest value in each I'm sorry in each row the lowest value is negative one, and the highest value in each column is positive one. So there's no overlap. So there's no saddle value. So this type of game is called non-strictly determined. Player R could play either row since a minimum of negative one in each row and player and player C could play either column since there's a maximum of one in each column. In a non-strictly determined game, knowledge of the other person's move beforehand can give a distinct advantage. If R knew what C was going to play or vice versa, then they could determine the best strategy. Is there an optimal strategy for each player? Uh, the answer is yes. Okay, so let's just do one more example here where we identify uh, if determine if these matrix games are strictly or non-strictly determined. So let's start with A. Uh, if you look in A, if you identify the minimums in the rows, you have negative 8, 4 and negative 5. But then if you do the maximums in the columns, you have 4 here, 8 here, and 10 here. Well, this is a strictly determined game since it has a saddle value. But if you look at this one, if you pick the negative, the most negative number and each or the worst case scenario for the rows, you get negative 3 and a negative 2. But if you pick for the columns, here you get 5 two, three, and four, there's no overlap, so therefore there's no saddle value. Thus, we would say this game is non-strictly determined. So basically, if you have a saddle value, a game is strictly determined, and if you don't have a saddle value, the game is non-strictly determined. And in the next section, we'll talk a little bit more detail about how to come up with these optimal strategies for these types of games.